Hey everyone, it's Jim T. Graham and Jason Cole wearing an an unusually white shirt. You know, Jason, I don't know if I've seen you in a white shirt. Well, I wear white. I got white RC group shirts, you know. But this yeah. is uh, the team concept shirt I got in the mail recently. I got a yellow one and a white one. The yellow one's getting washed right now. I like it. It looks pretty pro. Yeah, it's it's that breathable mesh, like summer, like sweat in it kind of shirt. So it's going to be nice to fly competitions in. Yes. Getting that's the live a, chat going here. Awesome, awesome. Let me go do that too, just so that I don't have to stop in the middle of, uh-oh. Yes. All right. That live, that's right. That live I hear chat. it. I hear <laughs> it. So today we're going to talk about, as we get all set up here in the studio and get the live viewers live, we're going to go over uh, Horizon Hobby RC Fest 2019. What a blast it was. We have a, okay, that's Conan O'Brien. That is not what I'm looking for, Jason. Oh, is Conan in the chat again? Damn. That guy. Okay, I got it, I got it. There's Jason, white shirt. All right, there's live feed. Hey, Joey. Hey, Brian Hello, Chambers. Man, Brian is like, uh, I believe he was on the live feed too the other day. Yeah. So here's the story. Jason and I got in the big black truck. The baby and, tape for sure. And, and it wasn't a, you know, driving up to Champaign from Nashville is not a bad ride. It's a uh, right about the time you're like, okay, I'm ready to be there. You actually are there. And so the great part about, and I, I don't want to give away my secret, but the great part about this event is there's a hotel like within uh, Jason Rodas. What is that dang thing you ride? Jason? Segway mini pro Segway mini pro. He actually at one point jumped on it and rode it up to the field. That's how close it is. The yeah, other right great there. part, there's a store like a grocery gas store right across the street from the, uh, from the hotel. And then there's a restaurant to the left. Now, Kim Payne will tell you the food's not very good there. And then upon reflection, Jason, maybe that food wasn't very good. It how was, was your it food? awesome? It was like they'd taken frozen things and then uh, put it in something and then just brought it out on a plate. But, you it know, was, you know, if you need nourishment, you can get it there. That first night, I was so starving that anything anyone would have brought me, I would have been, thank you, thank you. I was yeah, starving. Right. Yeah. So Jason got and I got up there on a prep day. Actually, I believe we got there a day earlier than we should have upon reflection because uh, I felt a little guilty, Jason, because... We were there and people were like unloading chairs and unloading tables and unloading boxes. <laughs> yeah. And we were like, okay, where can we go that we won't get put to work? Well, yeah. Well, you know, that's kind of their thing. And then in I, the way, you know, it was more like just getting in the way, like that was trying it. to talk to people when they're in the middle of setting up. And so, Hmm. I don't know if we can do this the right way or not. Um, I do have some screens to share and Jason, I don't know if you noticed, but today I put up a, a thread on Fly Giants with all the videos, at least all the ones I think I I, I think I got them all on yeah. Fly Giants in one thread. And so the very first thing we did, I, I did, I thought we should help them unload chairs. But then I thought that is not why we're here. We're here to cover the event for all of you out there. And so that's what we did. We turned on the, uh, well, our live stream was a few minutes late. Technically, we wouldn't even have one. And, I, and so we were like, Let's turn on the camera and see if we can get a live stream going off. Try, of yeah. And it, no Wi Fi. I, I just saw the first of it. Uh, you, it's obvious that we don't do that a lot, or at least I don't. <laughs> Is it on? Do you hey, see the button? Me and my super close up face for a second. I love that I've started saying button as if uh, that's how you say button. But uh, I digress. But, so uh, we got a great video going where we started walking around, you know, and it was kind of there were no people there other than people preparing for the show. And I thought, well, I don't know what we're going to get here. But we actually got a lot of really good interviews with Matt Andron, who designs yeah, a lot of the planes you yeah. fly. Um, we went over just like we were about to stop it. And then we saw a rock crawler and we walked over to take a closer look. And the guys that drive and ride them. We're sitting there and they gave a great interview. And so there's yeah, some good stuff. Cool. The, the rock crawler racer thing. Yeah. Super loud engine. It was awesome. The thing I kept wondering about is what did does it cost to own such a thing? Oh, yeah. And then that's not really the cost. The cost would be hauling it around to events to go compete in and what that costs. So it's I'm sure it's all very tricky. What's up, and Victor the, and Shelby? Welcome. 
Shelby Ball, man. All right, all right. Yeah, I mean, it was cool to get there that early. When did we see the – so Baggins was talking about don't want to see any industry secrets or anything. We did see mm. an industry secret airplane – Let's that talk we're about really that. We're not really allowed to talk about. We can, well, we're not, we can talk around it, but we can't talk about it. So I'm going to talk about a part of the hobby or part of us in the hobby that you may not know about. And uh, without divulging any secrets, I uh, certainly over the past decade or so have been aware of gigantic things that was, were so big. And Jason can attest to this. I wouldn't tell anybody. That would include the previous owner, Jason or Matt. And uh, the only way people tell you secrets is if you can keep them. That's right. And so uh, we actually stumbled upon a pre-release airplane, which, by the way, Jason, I did find somewhere. It does, yeah. And I did, I did push it out to the right places. So we took photos and videos of this uh, pretty sweet. I was trying not to cuss there. Pretty sweet airplane uh, because I was going to describe it in a cussing way. It's in a bad. Uh, it, uh, Anyway, I don't. Anyway, can I say anyway? <laughs> I've gone down a road. Anyway, so uh, so we were there for the video and we took photos and uh, we were everyone there that saw this plane were legally obligated not to report on it or show photos. Yep. And so we have not and we will not. And I have it sitting on my desktop though the video of this and, airplane. And maybe which will get posted at some time in the future when it's appropriate. There was some waffling about, well, I don't care, but maybe this person cares. And that person did care. And then the uh, point is, is and, and they're totally right. Why get people excited over something they won't be able to get for a while? And yeah. that does frustrate me. So I totally get it. Definitely. But that is, you know, you can be there and see things like that at yes. this show. If you were there, for, uh, I guess that was Thursday and it was gone on Friday. It certainly wasn't on the ground on oh, Friday, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, so and they did have their, they had like a giant dealer convention that coincides like adjacent to the event, which happened in a, a, some, I don't know where it happened. At. I don't know if they had a convention center, some offsite facility. They had all their dealers out or, you know, a lot of the dealers and had a big convention. And then they were there. A lot of them were there on Friday. So what I think we should do right now is I created a master there's only one batch of photos that I left on RC groups that can go on flying giants because it was on a separate computer. So I'm going to share my screen and Jason and I can then walk and talk about the show itself. I'm so glad this, you got that aerial shot from Jeremy. That's cool. Yeah. So Jeremy, I left it at home, so I didn't get to do that. I lamented to him that we didn't have anything to get an aerial shot, even though I'm sure we both own things that do so. Yeah, I just didn't bring them. Yeah, so this was the good shot. So um, I can't get this to zoom in. It's because I uh, no me, JT's got his braids tucked in his hat. Yeah, yeah, they're they're back behind me. I actually so, was I thought <laughs> I might have to go to a government um, ooh behind the scenes of this thread. Oh, it's not there. Okay, I can't do that either. I was going to try expand and expand this uh, aerial. I was thinking I might have to go to a government uh, office today, and when I do that, I pull my braids back so as not to portray a person that they would uh, <laughs> like think twice about. At least that's my goal. <laughs> so here we see the runway, which is awesome. And then uh, the most, I think one of the spectacular parts about this uh, uh, site is that it's a huge farmland out in front that I don't know how many acres that is. I'm going to guess at minimum 10. It's massive. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's hard. To, it's, if you hit the trees on the other side of the runway, you you did something special. Now, uh, when we talk about Chase the Ace Ducia, or now known as Mr. Ace, I do believe there was a kind of a V notch at the back here, and I believe he was shooting for that at one point in his demo. He always went really yeah. far out, and then I, he was always going towards the notch. Well, well, it reminds me of what guys do at Joe Nall during the demo sometimes where they try to go, you know, cut in go between around the back. trees, and that's close enough where you can do that and people can still see it. This is so far away. It's like, man, you just just burning – all kinds of time just to get there. And then you come up and back. It was, it wasn't as impressive. And then over here we see, uh, there were multiple car tracks. You can't see, although you will see some of the cool stuff. So we have a rock crawling track. We had a, or they had a mud, uh, pit and then they had some jumps and then they had this big track and then Tractable. right, right Monster here, jam, a micro monster jam track. 
and then a full scale a grave digger right here in front of the stands. Yeah. And then on the back row, you'll see all the RVs, the people who came to stay. And this was not, I went to the very first year of this, and this was kind of a come and go type of situation. Mm. So we'll scan through here. We got in, and these are pictures of some airplanes that they you, had out. You got your hands on that guy right there, didn't you? Uh, you uh, actually, no. I said, you fly it, let me take pictures. Oh, that, I thought you said you flew it. Mm -mm, I said I wanted it. Ah. Gotcha. So this is the, uh, this is a, Gary Wright plane and it's the slow ride and it's very large and flies very light and it looks like you could do anything you want. Jason, you've flown this, right? I have flown it. Yeah. It's, it's like a, it, it heckin, reckons back heckins reckons. I don't know. It, it kind of reminds me of the old uh, fun fly planes. I don't know if anybody on the feed remembers fun fly planes, but Jerry L Smith, uh, you know, nine time world fun fly champion. Uh, they, they would do like three loops and three rolls in as quick amount of time and land on like a single wheel, but they were really light and aggressive and aerobatic 3d It's kind of before 3d even. And that's what the slow ride reminds me of. It's pretty fun. Very big and very light. And it it's 150 bucks. And we figured $300 after you put servos and, and an electric yeah. motor on yep. David Payne, our old friend from uh, in the oldest days of us being in the hobby uh, on the mower. And so that's literally what they were doing on Thursday, just getting ready, mowing. And uh, on the way out, I'll show this because it's fun. The field is right in front of a full-scale train museum with trains that go up and down these tracks. And so all over the place, look at that thing, man. That's crazy that's cool. down. Were these trains that they'd saved, a caboose, and then these old box cars and this old steam engine. And um, that's on the way in and out. You may recognize this guy. He's the host of the AMA show. He's the very first person we saw when we got on the ground Saturday. And then the Hayes uh, came up. Hayes, Hayes, Hayes. And uh, there's some Tennessee folks. And I always see them at this event. And by the way, the background, Dragonfire Pizza was oh. absolutely awesome pizza. It, it made me sad that we couldn't get Dragonfire in Nashville. I'm going to do a yeah. zoomy zoom on this background so it's bigger for you guys. So uh, I won't go through all probably over a thousand photos, but this is the demo, I reckon. And then here's Mr. Ace and John, and they're getting ready to go out. And so Jace did a demo every day. I believe he did two demos, one in the evening or one in the afternoon. Uh, around noon or one in the evening. The obligatory hat in the air shot. Did you that hear me? This I was yelling this at his friend. I think his friend's name is Jason Morris. Uh, I don't remember his name. He finished his uh, demo and I'm yelling, wave your hat, wave, wave your, your hat. hat. He wouldn't do it. Take a bow. And then a lot of the new planes that you've seen this feature were out and uh, fly. Oh, I got me a jet picture. So rare. And so that's the beauty about this thing. If you're a Horizon fan and you want to see Horizon stuff, this is the place to do it. So, Jason, this is a newer bird, right? Is this the new? Uh, that's, that's the Carbon Z Cub, the new version. Yeah, new, yeah. the newest Carbon Which Z. Which is awesome. They had it out. And a little more, a little more. Oh, this was super cool. So oh, this my is gosh. A, that thing is amazing. Let's find a smoky version. Yeah, of this yeah. Bird. Real RC car smoking tires on a runway. I mean, I'd never seen it before. So he's like doing donuts and he hauled down the track. I forget what the top speed is, but this is not a cheap car. It just burning the tires. 600 bucks. It's like 100 miles an hour. It's, it's crazy, man. It was absolutely impressive. Here's the ring of fire being prepared. Uh, we The day we got there, it wasn't at all burning. And then they figured it out in the evening time while we ate pizza. And this guys put in some work. Yeah, man. Well, it was uh, big props to Andy at Horizon because uh, he'd put in tons of work before anyone got there to, to get it all uh, put together. So these guys went up and, you know, you always say you want to pull a banner. We have threatened it for years, but I've never successfully done it. And they were pulling two that looked really good. Yeah, it actually worked like a full scale, like so it's supposed to work. They only flew that. I didn't see that on the second day. 
And no, then they had that one day. Yep. They had this boat area, which is cool because they had the logo on the bottom. And then uh, you'll see uh, when it opened up to the public, people could come out and fly boats, fly airplanes and all that. So this is uh team stinger, right? Just should be somewhere. Yeah. Stinger auto sports. Stinger auto sport was out. So they brought this Mustang. They're the same guys for the uh, truck too. All, then, all same guys. This guy, did they say this is modeled after, or there was going to be a release of something like this? Uh, no, I think there's just, it was similar. Oh, okay. It's based on, yeah. Then I took a lot of, uh, as many photos as I could internally. And then here's the grave digger. So the word on the street is it's, this was an actual production grave digger that was out on the circuit at a certain amount of time. It's now retired. And it lives in the semi, yeah. which I saw the day before. And I was like, I'm sure it's in there, but I don't get it. So I guess it drives around to events. And then I got some shots of um, some of the different off-road activities that you could do. Some of the people, lots of people. It, it really is. It's a celebration of RC. It covers all aspects. Anybody could come out and bring your own airplanes or trucks or vehicles or whatever and get involved and actually fly or race or participate and just use the tracks. Um, you know, it's just come out and have a good time. And then they had a lot of try me stations. You could get kids driving trucks or flying airplanes or running the boats around, you know, it's just like, man, get the public out. Just let them see what RC hobby is all about. And I, I did, I told you one day, I was like, you know, this has to be the biggest RC event that has the most non RC people in attendance. Cause it was just general public just coming around, checking it out seeing what it's all about. And tons of kids and they were bringing out groups uh, from the city and all kinds of stuff. So not what you would normally see at an RC event, not a bunch of old guys like me, but this thing was very creative. I'm, I'm probably off the track now, but man, this track, somebody really thought it out. Yeah. And I had one of the guys that helped build that is from down here in uh, middle Tennessee and Man, they put in some work on that rock crawling track, but it was amazing. It was so impressive, and they were hardcore about it on the competition. It's like you don't touch your truck, you know. It's you don't use the hand of God to come in and flip your truck back over. You get another car to come flip you back over. And then when they had the actual competition part of it, they had these courses laid out. There's a bunch of sections to this track. It was massive for the rock crawling. And they would have a timed uh, and they would have it timed and then also have boundaries. So if your wheels just barely scrape the boundary, you're out. You got to pick up a truck and go go to the next round. And they had scorecards. I don't know how they were scoring everything, but they had this one section that I watched for a while and it, you had 30 seconds to get through it. I didn't see anybody finish it. It was that <laughs> hard. And it, everybody was hitting boundaries or just running out of time. And it's pretty serious. So, I mean, you could still go have fun if you weren't good, but man, it was pretty stiff competition. I've seen this in real yeah, life, cool. but never in yeah. RC. They had pretty it last cool. year. Yeah, that was really cool. And it um, works just like the real thing. As it travels down, the weight shifts up, moves forward, and, and bogs the truck down and stops. And they just see who can get the farthest. Speaking of hand of God, they have a dang RC water truck. Wow. The mud pit was pretty fun. That was a time event too. see how far you can get into the mud and, and then like everybody driving these cars were like eight years old so i just stood there and tried to get some in the this air shots big as last year this had more uh, natural obstacles with the uh, dirt jumps last year they had it was like all metal ramps and things it was a much bigger freestyle wow. course Ooh, nice shot well, my camera, you know, when I'm out there, I never can tell how the camera's doing. There's a cup cadet right there. And uh, the camera did pretty good. Here's the thing I was looking for. This was super cool where you had yeah. to drive down the rails. Yeah. yeah. So that guy just went to the mud. And so they would just, oh, there's a C10 right there. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I mean, if you're in the if you're in the trucks at all or rock crawling, this was just a superb track to to be at and see. So we went and ate that bad dinner at the uh, wagon wheel, and then when we came back, this <laughs> helicopter was on. But the good news is, uh, it got stuck in the dirt, and so it had to move. 
Let's go to the shot. And so we got a shot of it flying away. Bye. No rides were given, unfortunately. No, it's landing. There's Jason Cole. So here's some close-ups I took of that new car. It's That's our truck. Infraction. And then there's a, a exact same kind of version of that. That is a roller. It's a it's a frame only with a with a like a F1 kind of style body on it. That's called the Limitless. This thing was frightening. I said, "Is that a Horizon?" Uh, and the, all the guys were like, "No." And then they all stood back and watched it. No, it's like he, flight test right there. It's a foamy. He would do these high speed, low runs, man, and you could see the whole back of that airplane yeah. just rattle. But it was impressive. I don't know, Daniel. I, that's a great question because they were working on him and setting him up when we got there. I I know the main track for the uh, buggies is always there, but I don't know I, about the rock crawling course and the, I, the other stuff. I bet 1000 bucks based on them pouring concrete that that is not going anywhere. Mm. They certainly aren't going to recreate it. Yeah. So here's uh, John Ducia and Jace. Mr. Race and out there doing a uh, rifle roll. Oh, Sam, this is in Champagne or Monticello, Illinois. Up yeah, north. the home of Horizon Hobby. Yep. At Eli Field. It's kind of put on by Horizon and everybody's welcome to come out. You you know, you don't have to have a Horizon aircraft or vehicle to come out and play. It's just bring your RC stuff and come out and have a good time. And I'll do a brief overview of the of the interviews and the videos that we have, but uh, we actually get to sit down and talk to Jace about his RC beginnings and yeah. how he got as good <clears throat> as he is. Here's me trying to grab some of the crowd. A lot of Mennonites were there, which was cool. I got to talk to a lot of those folks. Good there they are right there. Yeah, there they are. I uh, I was a uh, I found their overalls and shirts appealing. I'm like, this is how I dress anyway. So they sat and talked to me about that. <laughs> and then more boat driving. I was trying to get an action shot. Oh, and then that's cool. And then over here is uh, they had a train set up in the actual uh, field house. And then here we go. So the ring uh, of fire. The silver it used to be a trampoline. Yeah. 24 feet. And the uh, silver parts weren't there. And so they couldn't get the whole thing to light, but this was their solution. They had multiple uh, gas inlets to get the whole thing in quarters. Then they added these to shield the flame from wherever the wind was coming from. And we were very excited to see they got the whole thing to light, but that's not all my friends. <laughs> What's happening in Lace One RC and fun. Um, they in the middle have a tube that's remotely controlled and I'm sure I got a few good shots of it. And when an airplane would fly through the middle, everyone was crowding in front of me. I couldn't get a shot. So airplanes are flying through here and a car started jumping through there, but they would be able to throw a torch up. When like a uh, thrower, radio controlled flamethrower guy had a spectrum yeah. radio. <laughs> he, he would pump it every time somebody'd fly through. Well, uh, I have better shots in a second, so we'll get to that. And then here's all our Horizon friends. There's DP and Kim. And uh, this must be the demo again. Oh, they, they have definitely played some Johnny Cash. They, they basically covered all the fire songs. What's funny <laughs> is they they, <laughs> as soon as it lit up, Ring of Fire would come on. But when it went on Facebook, everybody was making Ring of Fire. But we'd heard the song so often. I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, yeah. actually still in my head. I was humming it this morning. We got it. It's uh, <laughs> Ring of Fire. Here's the mud pit being utilized. I got it on the second day. And uh, everyone would stand around and somebody would get ready. And then as soon as that truck would launch, he'd throw mud all over everyone. Oh, you didn't want to be anywhere near it. Yeah, look at that. Did he make it all the way through? That guy might have. I didn't see anybody do it. That looks awesome. Then this was an interesting tractor pulling truck. Man, that's a whole different world, man, from what I'm used to. Yeah, they all walk their trucks, so they drive their trucks in front of them. Some yeah. guys use, use their trucks to pull their carts. It's a it's a culture. It's a it's a subset culture of RC. 
This may or may not be the memorial. Joe Ambrose, the uh, president of Horizon, passed away recently. I looked it up. It was the very first of the year. Uh And um, they did a tribute to him with some jets, and they had the whole team out there. And the new – he was the CEO. The new president, Chris Dickerson, said some words, and then they uh, flew these jets. And so this is Allie flying this jet. Ali uh, was kind of a new guy to the scene, but now he's fairly well known. You were still set up for nighttime, man. Yeah. So you get a lot of light there. right about here, I was like, you know, I changed my camera last night. And uh, <laughs> you can see right here is where I realized it and fixed it. Down the snout. Very cool. But the oh, crown. Yeah. We'll get to that in a second, boss. The okay. crowds were very big on these days. It wasn't too hot. It was slightly hot. Yeah, this bad. is Pete P- Goldsmith's jet. So Pete Goldsmith was there. Here's a little close up. Amazing. It's really amazing airplane. Jet. Uh, this is an old friend of mine, and I don't think he realized that he looked this way. <laughs> so I said, <laughs> Just smile for me. And then as soon as I took this picture, he grabbed his hat and he goes, oh, man. And I said, you look like you look like Pancho Villa. If I were him, I would have this photo everywhere. It'd be on my Facebook. It'd be on avatars. <laughs> so this is Chris Dickerson, by the way. I'll pitch this. Uh, it's not live yet, but I did an interview with Chris, with Jason, and uh, we got to ask him some questions about what's happening now that he's the president, what's the vision for the company, a little bit about RC Fest, a little bit about his past. I did a little research on Chris, and he literally rose himself up through the ranks of the company uh, to become the president. And so we talk about that. And that was this- really fun to have that opportunity and for him to request it from us and right. then uh, to get to spend some time with him and get to hear his vision kind of for the hobby and, and what all they're doing. That was pretty and cool. A s- super nice guy. You know, sometimes when you get to a high level, uh, people can feel a little different because we've met them all or, or not, or you don't even get to meet them. So for him to go take his time out, bring us in the RV and sit down and do an interview was great. Steve Petrano is with us in that interview as well. And you can check it out. Um, probably in the next few days, it'll be in our uh, news channel, getting the gear going up here. Ooh, classic little cropping. So these things are awesome. You know, this jet, I was saying to Pete, this is what hung off of the VFW pole in my hometown. Oh, wow. Yeah. And and maybe that's not the exact scheme, but it's pretty close. So when I saw it, I was like, why is this so familiar to me? And then I realized what was going on. So they actually did a missing man formation uh, with these two jets. It was for Joe. And they had a uh, tape playing with recordings of employees uh, talking about Joe and you know, just the good positive things about him. And it was, it was really, a lot of guys were emotional. Like uh, Pete Goldsmith flying one of those jets actually was like, he's like, I was, he was tearing up. He's like, almost couldn't see his airplane. Yeah. Which so is bad. It was pretty special. Whoops. Okay. So more than that went into the demos. And so they brought out their uh, newer stuff and flew it. It was blowing pretty good every day per usual. So this is after the memorial. Uh, Chris is talking. There's Dustin Boucher, whose name I can never say right. <laughs> Boucher, Boucher. Bring out the Havocs. So all of this can be found on RC Groups, and also everything's in one thread on Flying Giants. So let's see where these photos take us. This is all our demo photos. Jason shot a demo video, which we can take a look at briefly if you want to. Um, After we look at this, man, I sure do like this thing. They were hovering that, weren't they, Jason? Oh, yeah. It was so windy. They could could high off and get it to stop. What a cool-looking airplane. Bingo. Crow action right there. And then, uh, what is this? A 900, a V900? 100, 120 mile an hour. They had like six or seven of them out at one time. It was pretty fun. And yes, Lacey did see the new carbon cub. They had 
several of them out there flying. It looks awesome. Flies every bit as good as the uh, old Cub, but has just a lot of great new updates to it. Makes it more usable for the end user. So more of Jace. And I, I keep wanting to call uh, his friend Jason. Jason Morris is what's stuck in my head. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I hope that's right. I remember. I kind of said, you know, this is by no means negative about that about him as a pilot he was amazing like 3d he's going to compete in the xfc he's high level aerobatic pilot and it's awesome but he did a demo and then jace did a demo basically with the same airplanes right there you can see them and similar and it, demos you know they're training yeah, together yeah and it just it really blew me away just jace is at a it's kind of a different level you know it was wow. more more precise more locked in more planned it was I just more refined as, as a kind of a routine. And it really just showed me, okay, this guy is amazing. And then Jace was like, wow, you know, it's really impressive to see it back to back like that. But that's why Jace is Jace and just having the cojones to go up and fly next to Jace is, is amazing. Yeah. You know, it's a big yeah. problem. Jason, here's your third person video idea that you had a long oh, time yeah, ago. Yeah. That's Allie. That's his kid's truck. He did that for the uh, the long jump competition, which was insane. Did you get any video of this thing, Jason? I did not. Yeah, I did. I never saw it run. They they only had it that first day when we got there, just testing, and then they never used it when I was there. Yeah. So they were landing on this thing and driving it, and a kid actually surfed on it and then jumped off and twisted his ankle. Yeah. I heard Allie landed a jet on it. I did I, see I did. something happen. It must have been a video that I saw. So what we're looking at here is the big jump. And uh, there's the ramp. And I actually got a few shots of cars uh, flying through the air. Got a video up on it, too. And so these cars were hitting, you know, upwards of 100 miles an hour and nailing that ramp and then seeing how far they could jump. And I, I almost think it was 209 feet. Okay, wait, this is a good thing to discuss. Oh, see you this? see that? You see it? Yes. See that guy's leg right there? Oh, man. Jason said, you're not going to stand behind there, are you? What did he say, Jason? He said he was going to do like whack-a-mole. He's going to kind of poke out, do some radar so they could get the speeds and then kind of duck back in uh, behind the ramp as the cars approached. See this? I'm pretty sure this is the guy. So uh, this little kid, little. Uh, guys are making approaches and not even hitting the ramp, you know, and then try anyway, this little kid gets up and he went, this first run, I think was 99 miles an hour. It's the fastest yet. And so, uh, this is probably his first one. Cause he was as far as I could see on the second run that he made, he missed the ramp. I didn't get a picture of this. He missed the ramp and tell everyone what happened to us. Well, so here's from my perspective. I'm on the other side of the runway from where you're sitting right there. So, you know, you can see he's on the left side of the ramp. And so I'm on the right side of the runway about midway through. And I see the car come and it just about right when it approaches where I am, it picks up and just is hauling butt. And I'm like, holy cow, it's going to be a good one. And then it misses the ramp. And it I went, hear scuffling, right and then I hear I see the radar gun flying out uh, to the right side of the ramp, and I'm like, "Oh, that guy just got nailed." And uh, so I walk back over there, and he's laying on the ground moaning, and uh, you can see his ankle, like right around his ankle, he had like several gashes, and the bone was poking out. No, the bone wasn't poking out, but they were like, uh, oh, "I bet it's broken." And he's like, "Can you move your toes?" And he started moving his toes. It wasn't broken. He's okay but he's probably oh. in still a lot of pain. Well, there you go. I would think of a car hit you going in excess of a hundred miles an hour. I can't believe he didn't break his ankle. I mean, it, it's whew, crazy. So here's Ali's attempt with his 3d. I have not seen this video. They're probably going to use it in that weekly show. They did. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. It didn't go very far. It wasn't very fast. It <laughs> but, hey, it's fun. Now, uh, this is a guy we met and the cutest dog possibly at the show. Sorry, uh, Deuce. Oh, yeah, that's the guy he wanted to ask me about drones. That's all right. So there's actually a few more pictures in this that you can check out. And where is my video thing? I guess somehow I've gotten rid of it, but that's not a problem. 
I'm going to scroll up. So once again, I'll jump over here and show this to you. Um, yeah. On the channels page of RC Groups, you can find this. So here's Jason's post, and then here's the video of the Wish Wash RC Groups Smell the fever. <laughs> you should make look at that wow. carnage. And slow motion's good on this video. Yeah, so they had a night crawl. So everybody, you know, had lights. Most of the people had lights. I saw a couple guys running no lights. I'm like, what are you doing? I can't even see. But they ran the course at night, back to back, just following each other on a trail. Pretty dang fun. Wait, where's the ring of fire go? There it oh, is. it's coming up. Yeah, I was just showing so a little bit of all the activities. Here's the flame that's remotely controlled. That plane never caught on fire. I was hoping it would. Somebody said they were going to douse a plane in kerosene and then try I, to fly it up to the fire and see if it like. I don't think that's AMA legal, Jason. I, you know, I, I think that, I was thinking today they should come out with a ring of fire airplane, the Horizon ROF. <laughs> It'd be flame retardant and have the perfect wingspan. But if you go, I think if you go back, like, I don't know if you want to, but there was a lot of carnage. Let me just stop. At the beginning, I want you to look at everything on the ground and then look at this truck rocking back and forth. So that car, I think it didn't hit the plane, but it came close. So so look at this truck back here (laughs) writhing. (laughs) And it gets better in a second. Let's get. And then one, yeah, we had a lipo fire. And uh, yeah, caught on fire and started flaming. And then the truck came and ran it over. So here's it, Jace smoking it out. Night show. Yeah, it was amazing. As always, like the dude down at Joe now. It's spectacular. We got this live. It's still a giant crowd at like 9 and 10 o'clock at night, you know, sticking around watching all this stuff. Well, and so it's- waiting for the finale of the fireworks show at the end. Peace, peace. Well, this thing went on so long, I thought it was over twice. I know. I kept stopping the recording. I was like, okay, we're done now. Nope, it's still going. And they, of course, would fly radians up through the fireworks. And then inevitably, one never gets hit like you're expecting it to. They're flying all through it. That was pretty cool. the, The planes really add to the show, you know flying through the fireworks it's kind of fun that was the last part of the show for us it was a grand finale yeah uh everybody was pretty tired so here you can go watch the video on the noontime demo here you can uh watch videos on the jumping and then here's my interview with jace uh this is a lot about real flight and how he uses it to prepare for shows and how he taught himself to fly this is combat which is a pretty standard issue combat And then I have a photo flood here. Jason does photos of the uh, drone track. And let's go take a look at that. Wait, that's not what I meant to click on. So uh, this is uh, right as you're entering the event. And then they had gates. How uh, active was that section, Jason? Good amount of people there. I, I didn't really hang out there too much because because it's I'm just kind of over drone racing personally. But you know you can see it, it's again it's like the truck guys. It's like a culture. It's you live in this area. You know this is this is what you do with your life. And uh, you know you have all this gear and equipment. And I you know I've got a lot of that stuff. But it's just not my favorite thing to do. It's still fun, but you know. But they were racing. This was hosted by I think the Illinois. Uh, one of the local clubs there, they put it on and set up the track and held races and gave away trophies. I think I have a picture of the trophies. So they had some pretty cool looking trophies. There they are. There they are. And some good prizes for prizes donated. Love my DX9. Have a set of those. A great entry uh, piece. There you go. Central Illinois drone racers. Children. Ooh, that's pretty hot. Pretty sweet, yeah. It's lots of good stuff. One more shot of the field there. 
So you can literally just about do it all, man. Well, that's their goal. And that's also what the president says in the interview is that they, uh, they want to create a place that you would, uh, want to drive to every year and a place that, uh, opens the hobby up to new people. Yeah. And they're really about to outgrow that facility. Like they had cars, like that main image we showed of the aerial view with all the cars parking. So that got full and they had overflow parking down the road and they were shuttling people in on buses. And uh, so he said, you know, they might have to buy some more property at some point to get more space. I don't want them to move. So just a little more truck action. What else should we talk about, Jason? What else we got here? I have to fly my CX-5 DLG. Got any photos of that? Uh, not that I can get to at this moment. I mean, they're sitting behind me in their wing bags. I'm actually going to go get down to Tullahoma tomorrow and get a little... Uh, Let's go look at them. Practice in. They're right behind you. Grab one. Right. I can't get to it. I'm, in, uh, I'm locked in the headphones. Oh. But I am working on the review for these guys. Uh, so I'll, we'll do that another day when we have the review and everything done and pictures up for that. But getting used to the planes, getting ready for the world championships coming up in less than a month now. I'm going to be leaving. I'm still about, uh, I need about a thousand more dollars uh, fundraising to, to build up to be able to co- make sure I've got everything covered. Um, but getting real excited, starting to, you know, Get a little nervous, maybe. You're going to leave like 100, you say? Like 113 something pilots registered right now so far from countries all over the world. Some really good pilots, Joe Wirtz, Rolo. I mean, it's it's going to be really tough competition. So I was, I was telling somebody, was it you? Maybe I was telling in the car ride that I'm going to shoot for trying to make like the top half. Yeah, you didn't tell me that. Yeah. So, I, you know, I, I'm not going to come in and expect, I from what I hear, the world, you know, competition scene is is a lot tougher than it is in the United States. Even though we have a lot of people flying in the United States, um, and it's pretty tough. But I hear it's just like super competitive everywhere else. And uh, you know, to do well is going to be you know really challenging and hard. And it's going to be a very different set of conditions that I'm used to flying in because there's really doesn't look like there's any trees nearby. It's all open land, and I'm used to flying in and around trees. And how that works. So, yeah. So I'm just like, okay, 100 and something guys. Maybe if I can be in the top 50, that'd kind of be a good goal. And I'll just go from there. I'm just going to just hey, try everyone. to enjoy. The best we I got can. a special guest. Yeah. Nell showed up. It's Nell Graham, everyone. Sorry to interrupt, Jason, but she'll leave as soon as she shows up. Bye. Catch you later. <laughs> So I was talking to Craig at Horizon, who's competed in multiple uh, worlds, and he said, you really are going to find out how good you are when you head off and compete against the best in the world. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited just to be in it, you know? And so I, I think that there's not, there, there's not a lot of pressure on me, right? Like I'm not coming in as a number one ranked world champion pilot. Like it's, it's not like I'm expected to make the podium or anything. So that takes a lot of pressure off. You could just go out and have fun and enjoy it. And, uh, and I'm going to, you know, be writing and covering it. I'll have a, a thread up on RC groups where I'll be posting pictures. Hopefully I have Wi-Fi, or maybe I can get a data sim or something over there and, and be able to report back kind of what's happening and what's going on. And, and then just from a first timer's experience at a world championship level competition, see what's happening. You're making your dreams come true, Jason. Yeah, man. I'm super pumped. So we had a request in the live feed to look at the limitless. So let's go do that right now. So this is the Arma limitless all road speed bash. They did have this on the ground. I'm pretty sure I got a few photos of it. It's the one where you can put in your own power system. So it doesn't come with one. It's a roller. Yeah. We'll look at a link here and get pricing on it real quick. On horizonhobby.com, $3.99, and there's what you get. So, Jason, I don't know. I've never had a super high end car. I guess these are like super, yeah. these well, are like, it's, you know, one from Traxxas, it's like the AI one or something. 
uh, you know, 100 mile an hour out of the box. It's it's kind of going for that market. Super fast, super high end. I don't want to go 100, but I do want to burn my tires off, even though that does sound like it costs $50. It does. They were like, yeah, it's like 40, 50 bucks for a set of wheels or something. And yeah. And they were like, I don't know how fast nobody's tested how fast you're going to burn through your tires, but you start smoking them like that. They're not going to last that long. Big bore shocks and the graded aerodynamics. It's a lot of engineering when you get up to hundred miles an hour in an RC car, you know? Which, you know, is interesting in that uh, ramp competition, we saw more than a few cars literally go so fast they blew their tires apart before they got oh, to the yeah. ramp. Yep. Blew the tires. And guys, if you're going to do speed runs, go ahead, and, go ahead and just do everybody a favor and turn down that sensitivity on radio. <laughs> you, you, you don't need aggressive steering when you're going that fast. You just need a little bit. I, I was felt so spin out and, and re, you know, just reckless not even get to the ramp because they – couldn't drive it. That one guy almost got hit by another car. I almost got hit by a, a jet at Joan all. And then I believe it's the Porsche. It slid about six or seven inches right in front of me at full speed. And I was like, be cool. Don't move. Just stand here. Like nothing's happening. And I did. It yeah, awesome. And uh, there was a girl there with a, uh, what color would that have been? It was kind of Easter eggy looking car. But it was really, really nice. And she went so fast, she blew the wheelie bar off of it. And then I was going to pick it up for her. And when uh, she turned around, she ran over it and really messed her car up. Oh, a spree model. Boy, it looks like today's show is brought to you by a spree model. That was an accident. <laughs> but uh, but cool there you go. Though. Go check them out. A spree's got everything. That's how it should be all the time. You just accidentally get a uh, sponsor. So oh, once again, here's... Cannabis free. There's a chance I'll have the new DS12 in my hands by the next podcast Thursday. Really? It so you, could, did you get in touch with somebody? Well, yeah, I'm. He's thinking they might have it in on Monday there, and then ship to me in a couple days. So if everything goes well, I'll have it in my hands on Thursday to be able to show and talk about it on the podcast. But yeah, super excited about that for the competition. Awesome. Well, I'm gonna hit stop here. So um, I have my Timber X review being finished up and almost ready to go. Video, photos, thoughts. I actually, uh, it was interesting. I got to talk to some of the designers like Gary Wright and um, a few other people that were involved in that project. And so I got to ask questions, pitch theories out to them. Also in the review, I did a thing that I'm trying to do on all my reviews is create SPM files. So if you're like, I have to have this airplane, you can go in my review, download the SPM file to your SD card, pop it in your uh, Spectrum transmitter, and then be running the same setup as the guy who designed the airplane, which to me is probably the ultimate way to uh, take it out to the field because you know everything's right and you're using all the bells and whistles. Looking at the live chat. Uh, hey, Randy Green. What? Uh, Jason, does um, David still work? With, I, I think that he does not work in the chat. No, David. Oh. David left several, several years ago, four or five, maybe, maybe less. But yeah, he doesn't work there. And he was, he he had, was doing something with this company he bought. I think from Hawaii, he bought like the plans or rights to these models from Atlantic Glider Works. And uh, I kept telling him, you know, let me know when you're up and running. We'll do an article on it. We'll get you featured on RC groups. You know help promote it or whatever. And then uh, nothing's ever come of it yet. So we'll see. But Randy, we did get to spend some good time Friday night with uh, Kim and David and the Ducias. And Jason got to sit uh, ringside and see as hilarity, hilarity ensued as we broke in their brand new RV that they uh, are now cruising the country in. It was a good time. Had my all. I stayed up till one in the morning. And uh, didn't didn't suffer any damage for the next day. Yeah, it wasn't bad. It's the beauty of the field being uh, literally two minutes from the hotel. You know, yeah, almost, but with nice place to sleep and take a shower and stuff. I don't know, Jason. Can you recommend a car for under one hundred and thirty dollars? I could probably get you an airplane that I'd recommend for that, but I'm not all up in the 
entry level car stuff. That sounds a little low to me by about a hundred bucks for getting something good. I say anything from Axial is good. Um, I've had multiple uh, rock crawlers from them and they're reliable, great transmitter. And I've yet to actually break one. Now you may uh, have a dog bone issue here and there, but nothing that uh, any RC car won't have an issue with. Here's what I would suggest. And you might have to up that budget a little bit, but check out the, the uh, car section of the classifieds on RC groups. There's usually a lot of vehicles and you're going to be able to get more value for your money buying used. Um, just there's a lot that goes into that, you know, make sure that the car's in good shape and you may want to ask around, um, you know, in the forums there to get some more answers. But that, that's kind of when I'm, when I hear somebody wants something entry level or, or kind of get started in something, I'm like, man, check out the classifieds or stuff there all the time. I see what you did there, yeah. Jason. Yeah, man. So I don't think you want to vintage anything, but let's see if there's anything here for you. Hundred bucks to Maya M O three. That's a little car. I would think something like this would be more up your alley, but that's three fifty. X ray touring car. I actually, I don't know how big this is, but I have multiple versions of this car. One sixty is in your budget. Uh, you have to pay shipping, so that puts you at one eighty at least. And if you had, if you had a slash, that guy's willing to pay twelve hundred and thirty four dollars for one. Yeah, wanted. <laughs> I've got one truck left, I think, that I totally aluminumed out that I've been debating about selling because I just don't drive it anymore. It is a trick little ride. I'm looking for you something here. I don't see it, though. We're utilizing the site. We're not, we're not just sitting here. We're actually seeing if we can find you something. You Look at that, man. That That's going to be old. Yeah, I'll get you a link. Boom, boom. That is awesome. So we have a, oh. well, we also have a truck section too, Jim. That's probably where he'd want to be looking. Check right. out that link right there, Sam. And there's there's all kinds of stuff. Somebody yeah. just bought a uh, 18th scale Defender for $120. So if you just keep an eye on that section, there's a SC10 for 175 available right now. Okay. And so let me talk. Deadbolt for 175. So there, you can get stuff within that price range. I own this truck. I owned it. I did a review on it. You could look up Jim Graham uh, Deadbolt review, and you will find, you can go look at my review. And it is a pretty cool looking truck. It will do anything. It's not too slow. It's not too fast. And uh, is this sold or is this just marked down? It says sold right at the top. Oh, right there. They should have sold in red, man. Why is it in gray? That's a great question. Those guys. But anyway, uh, this would be a great truck to get if if you could find one. So we'll stop now. But uh, the slash, of course, 275. Okay, we're stopping. We tried. We tried, Sam. Well, JC... Are you going to any events or anything? Yeah, I am. Well, so end of this month, there's a uh, DLG competition in Tullahoma. It's about an hour away from me. And I'll be out there uh, with another team member, Nathan Bartley, I believe, is on registered to go. So we're going to be getting in our practice. It's the last competition before the World Championships. So we're going to hopefully not midair our airplanes and keep everything and, and just have some fun. But I'm not traveling anywhere until uh july so we'll be heading over to hungary my only thing coming up now is uh nash bro at the end of september and a huge thank you this uh was not uh something i went hunting for but zap glue is our sponsor this year they're giving zap to the first 50 pilots and then i, I said you know what you should do is uh give a coupon too and he's like there's a coupon in every bag and uh it's limited time only for the guys at the event so that's pretty cool and uh, we had banners and all kinds of stuff. So I'm pretty excited about that. And uh, everyone keep an eye out for Sam. Sam, post your, well, no, we don't want to inundate your uh, PM box here. But if you wanted to, you can post your username on RC Groups. And that way, if somebody adds something, they can PM you. Um, but it may turn into a deluge of RC mm -hmm. cars, which would hurt your head. 
All right, everybody. Well, it's uh, getting towards the end of the week. I'm sure Jason, not Jason, this show did not seem to knock me out like uh, normal shows do. You know, when you come back and you're like, oh, man, I don't feel right. Yeah, I agree. You know, it's not too long of a drive and, and the weather was pretty decent. It wasn't hot. It was, it was windy hot. enough to keep the hot off of me. Yep. So, eh, can't complain, you know. Good times. Living the dream. Um, that is all. Um, check us out next week. Be sure to hit subscribe and like it's important, not just to Jason and I, but to the hobby because it gets the RC video out there a little farther. The views sometimes I'm like, man, these views are not very high. I would like them higher. So let's see if we can get that going. I appreciate you. Randy green. It's always good to see you out there, man. We miss you. And, uh, Jason Cole, thanks for all your help out at the field and yes, uh, listen, listen to me chatter for six hours in the car. Simmer down now. Uh, hail to Mac Gun. Talk to y'all later. I'm Jim T. Graham, and you are Jason Cole. You're on the uh, RC Groups podcast. <laughs> right. This is the RC Groups podcast. All right. Bye bye. Hit the stop broadcast. <laughs>